This is the most asked about feature in our bus. It's our stove. We really try to divide our power usage, bring as much of it in from things that were easily accessible, like propane. Our girls all do music lessons, so we actually have this piano. You're in a little box yeah. with your spouse, and so it's, it's a pressure cooker at times. And many people ask, how do you live with three kids in a small space and get intimate time <laughs> together? But these doors also are <laughs> Hi, we're Jono and Taryn Tykalis. If you want to see how we live with three little girls full-time in our schoolie, come check it out. <laughs> Welcome to the inside of our bus. And our daughters are eight, six, and four. And we had to take into consideration them as we built this bus and how we could best accommodate our family. Our girls all do music lessons, so we actually have this piano and it does fold in half like this. This is all storage under the couch. We'll put this under the couch when we're not using it, but we use this side of the table for their music lessons. And when they're not doing this, we actually use this side for homeschool. The other cool part about this space is that not only do we have a one side of the table, but we have another side to make a full table that actually can seat eight to 10 people. And we were inspired by this design from another family that lives on the road. And if you want to purchase this design, reach out to me on our Instagram and I can let you know the family that helped us. This has been a favorite part of our build. We can seat everybody. And this middle part was all the treasures from our last year of travel. Our girls were able to place all their favorite seashells and rocks into the table. So it's pretty cool. What we can do with this table is that we can have it full like this to feed you know our family and have guests over we can put one side down have the other side up so we can do school or piano lessons or just feed them and then we can also put both sides completely away and then we have a totally open space for our living room and it feels a lot bigger in here when we do that we also have up front it's like our mud room up here this is our actually our hidden coat hook i like to show this little feature this is how the girls can hang their sweaters when they come into the bus. I have all their schooling up in these baskets. Here's some of their binders. And then right below here is where they put their shoes. So they got a lot of shoe storage here that kind of also goes under the couch. We also, in this area, we do have curtains for privacy. So we can just unsnap and pull the curtains. And then the front of the bus, we have uh, magnetic curtains. And then under this couch, we can lift it up and there is storage all underneath. The piano goes under there, their Lego. I don't even know what else is under there. All their crafts. It's great storage. And Jono's actually going to tell you what is under the other couch. All right, so all of our electrical is under one of our couches, bench seats here at the front. Most of it's kind of contained up to this area. Back here, we have 560 amp hours of lithium battery. And we've got a 3000 watt inverter, we've got a couple different MPPT chargers. Uh, one brings in the solar from the front of the front of the bus, and then the other brings in all the solar from the back of the bus. So I separated it out into two MPPT chargers because over time I've added solar. I've upgraded over time. And so what it allowed me to do was initially put in the front zone, and then as we kind of figured out what we needed, I added in the back zone. Basically what two MPPT chargers allows me to have is two separate systems acting as an insurance policy. If something's going on with one of them, I can still have power coming in. As far as our batteries are concerned, 560 amp hours, it's more than enough for us. The way we built our bus was to be pretty efficient as far as power goes. Like we have propane for our cooking. We have an instant propane water heater. And so that's not really drawing any power. Our biggest users are for sure our fridge. And then when it's hot out, our AC, our pellet stove, most of the, the, the heat's gonna be coming from the pellets. It does use a little bit of power to start up. And then being a little bit different than just a typical wood stove, it actually has forced air, which actually fills up the whole bus as opposed to just radiant heat. It's radiant plus forced air, but it uses very little power. And so we went with it for that reason. And then also, we're able to go eight to 12 hours without having to continually feed it with wood. We really try to divide our power usage, bring as much of it in from things that were easily accessible like propane, pellets, and then solar for the summertime. Uh, we can actually go probably for about five to seven days in cloudy weather. It's really been only the Pacific Northwest that you really run into continuous days of cloudy weather or trees and stuff like that. So it's worked out well for us. 
The reason we pursued this lifestyle is that we've always had a dream to travel North America. And originally it was by motorhome. But on my Instagram, I started to see a bunch of schoolie accounts. And as we looked more into them and dived in into what it would cost, the time it would take to build one and how we could customize the bus and travel safer for our family, we, we are really attracted to doing a schoolie build. You know, a lot of what helped facilitate us being able to enter into a little bit more of a nomadic lifestyle was actually decisions we made more than a decade ago. We had done the whole go to school, get good grades, mm -hmm. not good grades for some of us. <laughs> we were fortunate to meet a handful of people coming out of university that really opened a lot of doors for us. Um, a lot of them had created early retirement situations in their late 20s. That was attractive to us. We wanted to understand how do you live that way? How do you get there? We began a journey in of itself that set up a situation for us to walk away from our careers in our late 20s and have a lot more freedom, govern, <laughs> governance in our time, freedom in, in, our, in our calendar, and then options financially. So that's kind of what has facilitated us getting to this point. Welcome to our kitchen. Definitely a very well used space in our home. The first thing here is what John already mentioned is our pellet stove that we absolutely love. This is our little eating area. So if we don't wanna put the full table out, we can just have some food here. This is our mini split. So this is how we can heat and cool the bus. When we are plugged in, we'll use this to heat our bus. But when we're not plugged in and we're living off grid, that's what the pellet stove is for. But our batteries can run our AC several hours in the day. And it's so nice to sit here and feel the cool breeze. These are our little custom made cupboards for food storage. We also have soft closed drawers. Most people ask, how do you keep these shut while driving? For this one, we have a dowel, so that keeps it closed. And then on these drawers, we have these latches. This is the most asked about feature in our bus. It's our stove and it's vintage. We did pull it out of a 1960s camper and it was $100 on Facebook Marketplace. So what a find that was. We do have a hood here so we can ventilate the smells of the food out of the bus. We have an apartment size fridge, 10 cubic feet fits a lot for our family and then we have a big sink which i absolutely love i can bathe the youngest two girls in the sink and then when we're not using it we have all this counter size when i lived in an apartment in college days i actually this is actually a bigger kitchen than i had in my apartment so this is how we close the fridge so the food doesn't come out while we're driving but these doors also are swinging doors <laughs> I had to have these in the bus and they also allow for privacy. So when we're hanging out here at night, the front of the bus, the girls are sleeping in the back. They don't hear us very well. Family is happy. Also, we have these awesome skylights. We had to build these because Jono, he is six foot two and he actually does have to duck in our bus. So that's why he built these. Right now they're keeping the sun out, but these curtains we did make to keep the sun out during the day when it's hot, but we can have full sunlight when it's cool. It's a very efficient way to heat our bus and it's functional that Jono can stand in these parts of the kitchen without bumping his head. And he is the chef in our home. So that was very important that he could stand up. <laughs> so as you go through the kitchen and come through the swinging doors, you now come to the back half of the bus. And here we have our toilet room. This is our DIY compost toilet. We actually love our compost toilet. It has a fan, so it ventilates the smell right out. And then we have basically the bottle for the, the urine um, that we empty every few days. It's, it's really easy to teach our kids. They actually prefer it now <laughs> as opposed to flush toilets. It's actually funny because when we go to a public bathroom, they forget to flush it <laughs> So we have to retrain them. It's a great little space. I also am able to use it as a place to get ready. Um, I know some might think that's weird, but it works. Tiny space, you have to be creative. I have a mirror here, all of my skincare, Jono's skincare. And so this is my getting ready space. This is our shower. I was very excited to have a tiled shower in our bus, make it feel very luxurious. So this shower head uses 50% less water. So it's really great for when we're off grid and trying to save that water. And in here as well, the skylight is a very favorite feature. And this wood, it's a cedar wood, so it smells really good. And we got all our cedar wood for free. We actually had this neighbor that had a deck and we helped take apart their deck for them and say, we can take apart your deck, can we keep the wood? And that's what we did. And the girls helped us sand all the brown paint off. So that's pretty cool. And then over here, we actually have our little mini sink. And this mini sink is on this side of the bus, not with the toilet area, because we wanted to keep all our water lines on one side of the bus. And it's actually very functional because when the girls brush their teeth or wash their hands, the sink is little, they make quite a mess. And so it's good to have like a wet room in a tiled space where they can... <laughs> 
be a little bit messier with brushing their teeth and washing their hands. So that is our shower area. This area is our amazing bunk room for our girls. So there's the three bunk beds, middle, oldest, youngest, and then they have a playroom. We felt that this was a very important space to have for the girls. They make so many cool games with this use of space. And then underneath, there's like a basket of their stuffies. There's like another basket of all their books. And then they have a bookshelf here on the other side. We also have a lot of storage in this area. So this is our closet. We hang some clothes here. We have hanging clothes here and our hamper. And then this is hidden storage. I love this. It fits a lot of all of our towels, our toiletries, hair products, just a little bit of everything. And as well, when we're driving, these all latch. And then this is kind of cool. We haven't, we were going to build custom drawers here, but for now, this was a temporary thing. We just put Velcro on these boards and they stay pretty good. And we have these Ikea pullout drawers for all the girls' clothes. So that is the bunk room. It's been so cool, the community that we've built on the road um, and meeting friends everywhere we go. Our girls have a fantastic like social life as, and have learning great people skills as they're in new places all the time, learning to adapt and just yeah, shake hands with people and and expand their learning of like the world around them. So that's been a really cool thing that we've learned on the road. I think the importance of community, it's not like we didn't know it before, but it's definitely elevated as totally. we've been in this life. There's also a lot of, uh, you're, in a, you're, you're in a little box, <laughs> yes. you know, with your spouse. And so it, it's a pressure cooker at times, which, you know, for a lot of people, they may be like, oh man, that's gonna be so difficult. We've been very fortunate. We've got a lot of people in our life, mentors, parents, different things like that, where we've had a lot of places to go for help on having a successful relationship. But mm -hmm. being in a pressure cooker, being in a little tiny <laughs> box, traveling around, yeah. I mean, a lot of more things come up and you are you can't just leave, you yeah. can't just escape. You yeah. have to, you figure, have to it figure it out, out. and Solve talk it. through it. So your communication goes through the roof, yep. um, which is probably the best thing that ever happened to our relationship. Totally. And I think it's, it's I'm not saying everyone should do it, but it could be something to consider. You know, if you want to really put your relationship to the test, yeah. it's going to be a little frustrating. And you know, we were fortunate to have been married for many years prior to, uh, which gave us a lot of footing and foundation. Aww, That's a big thing, I, I think. I love you. We I love marriage. Okay, Aww. okay, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to our bedroom. This is our cozy little space. We made it feel like a cabin in here with all the wood. We do have more clothing storage up here. I've got my side of the closet and then Jono has his side. We did do something special about this room because again, many people ask, how do you live with three kids in a small space and get intimate time <laughs> together? We soundproof the walls and that's why there's a door. So we do have some level of privacy. We also in here have this night light at night. When I turn it on here, it gives us a nice glow and it's great atmosphere at nighttime. We also have our computer monitor in here. And that is so again, we can watch movies in here. And then at the end of the bed here, we do have more storage. Um, that these little flip up boards here. This is Jono's socks and underwear, and mine are at the other side. This is our back door, so we can open our back door and have wonderful views when there are not bugs. <laughs> and then under the bed, there is more storage. So we have our 100 gallon water tank on this half of the bed, and then the front half of the bed, we have a bunch of bins with our storage, and it does open up with gas struts, and it stays up while we get our stuff out of storage. All right, this is a really favorite part of our bus. Jono built these bunk bed ladders that we can crawl up and come to the rooftop deck. We can enjoy many times. This is actually where we have our date nights. We'll put both our chairs up here, do some stargazing. We do have our kids come up here, but it's usually under our supervision. We do have railings that we sometimes can put up. There's like poles that go at each corner and some cables. So we do that for extra safety. And then uh, the other part of our deck is we have our Starlink that we strap up here. Gosh, I'm so glad we can get Starlink because that's how our life can be able to live on the road using Starlink. So. It's great. Okay, we got one of two shade sails up just for a little bit of extra shade in that summer heat. We get a lot of sun coming through these windows and uh, just to aid our mini split AC, it really actually helps a lot. Inside here, I've got some tools. I have the bus battery and back in here, we have a generator cabinet, some cords and stuff like that, a little bit of storage. And then further back is our heat pump for our mini split. 
Up on top, we've got about 1250 watts for solar. Some of those panels, as you can see, are on gas struts just to tilt for that summer sun. That really helps a lot. What we got going on over here is our storage slash, I guess, outdoor kitchen tables, that kind of stuff. In the back end of our storage, we have our gray water tank, which just takes up the bottom. And then there's a ton of storage on top of that. And then up front here is just all storage. The storage and these doors, we actually built out of the inner skin of the bus when we demoed it and then some angle. And yeah, they just kind of pop up. We're able to have some table space out here, workspace, whatever we want to do. The only thing is we got to crawl under there to get into the storage, which just, it's a workout for me. Thanks for watching. If you want to follow along on our journey, you can check us out at bust.free.life. And yeah, we hope to see many of you out there on the road. <laughs>